Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm Toby. And this is the Toby Creates Fish Room Tour. So come on in, I've got a lot to show you. So let's get this tour started off right with my two Blackwater Beta tanks. So both of these setups are 5 gallons and are run with cheap little hang on back filters which don't produce too much current and keep my bettas comfortable. Both are heated with 50 watt heaters at about 78 to 80 degrees depending on the day, making sure that the water temperature is comfortable for both my fish. On the left we have a dragon scale placat betta who I've named Chris, he is the only fish in this room with a name and that should be just because he is just so personable and I've had him for quite a long time now. On the right is a female opal betta I believe is the name, you know the fancy name that you get at a pet store and her setup is quite recent and new and the setup hasn't had a lot of time to settle in but I think both tanks are absolutely ideal setups for you betta and I can't say for sure but I'm pretty certain that both fish love their tanks. Both are set up in a nice natural black water style with lots of botanicals, wood, and leaf litter just to sort of simulate a natural environment and provide the tannins that bettas love. Both are relatively sparsely planted, uh, the one on the left more so Chris's tank because it has completely been overtaken with salvinia and I've just let that happen because it really helps simulate a natural environment it's to kind of dim the light which really helps bring out Chris's colors and also I think he really enjoys all the cover provided by their roots. The tank on the right does have floating plants as well but they're kind of more kept at bay in the left corner and is mainly dominated by Anubias and I think both scapes look great in their own way. The left one is much more natural but I think the right one is definitely a little more aesthetically pleasing but they work super well for both fish. Maintenance on these tanks is maybe one water change every two weeks. Uh, it's not really a lot of work to take care of these guys anymore. Once a tank's been settled in for long enough, most of these guys can be just put on autopilot and they handle themselves very nicely. Like many people, bettas are just about my favorite fish personality wise and cannot really imagine myself ever having a fish room without some in there. So I'm really glad that I have these two right now and I'm considering expanding my collection. Right next door, we have my oldest and one of my most beloved Beloved setups, my top fin 36 gallon bow front aquarium. This tank has been through the ringer and has had everything from giant algae outbreaks to cyanobacteria blooms, you know, all the kind of stuff that you have with a tank that's been set up for almost two years now. But now that I've got the stocking kind of honed to where I want it to be, the plants are balanced and everything is doing great, I don't see any reason to break this tank down in the foreseeable future. And I just want to sort of let this thing go for however many years this fish room will keep running or however many years this tank will decide to stay in balance. But I hope that this tank lasts all the way until I end up moving out of this room. But for now, there's no end in sight for this tank and everything's doing great. All the fish in it absolutely love the scape and work so well with it and I think are the perfect stocking for this. The plants are growing super well even though I haven't replenished the nutrients in the substrate since I've set it up other than maybe throwing a couple root tabs in there. One of my favorite pieces of this tank is that super lush bush of Christmas moss covering the main piece of hardscape. I think it looks so good and I just love how it's grown in so nicely over the months that I've had it in here. Started as some tiny little sprigs but it's really grown out to be a beautiful centerpiece of this tank. I also love the large cryptocorn in the corner that discreetly covers the filter and also the heater yet still provides a really nice natural overarching creeping look to this tank. Of course I love my big Anubius clump in the back. You know there's just so much of this tank that I love and I just really thoroughly enjoyed watching it progress over the years. This tank is stocked with a large school of black neon tetras and a similarly sized school of red serpe tetras. I've got a nice little Siamese algae eater that's growing up really well in this tank and doesn't have any problems cohabbing with the tetras. Also I have three albino longfin bristlenose plecos which I'll see every once in a while along with a clown pleco who was actually the first inhabitant of this tank and is probably going on two years old now. He's super chunky, loves eating all the wood, and I'll see him every once in a while, sometimes in the day, but usually when I come in at night. He's a really great guy to have, and I couldn't really imagine this tank without him in there. I love having a little oddball fish that gives you something to look for in a tank like this. But again, this tank doesn't have any problems anymore. I give it a water change once every three weeks or so, uh, but it really doesn't require one, mainly just topping it up 
and no CO2 on any of my tanks, of course, and it's really just been great to watch this tank grow in, and I hope that its lifespan stays long and we don't have any problems with this tank down the line. This is one that really holds a special place in my heart just because of how long it's been set up, and I don't really want to ever take it down until I absolutely have to. Moving right along, this one's going to be pretty quick. We've got our little mini pond right here. So this sort of raggedy little mini pond right here is currently without fish. I recently introduced a group of Kohaku guppies into it and unfortunately my quarantine tank was taken up at the time so instead of quarantining them I put them right into here and if I would quarantined them I likely would have been able to save most of the colony just because on a setup like this that's viewed top down you can't see a lot of problems your fish might be having. Everyone was great for a little bit, but then there were some, I think there were fish lice or something like that that were developing, and eventually we lost quite a few of them, but not before I was able to extract the healthiest ones, put them in a plant holding tank where they are now. So we do have at least a male and a female left from that colony, so hopefully we can rebuild that. But that means that at this moment, this setup has no fish in it. It's a little bit raggedy right now, the plants are kind of all over the place, but I do kind of like the look. Kind of an interesting play on just like a potted plant look, it actually can also house fish. I'm gonna do take two of this, gonna kind of clean this thing back up, probably variatus platys for it this time. Uh, of course I'm gonna quarantine these guys in an actual tank where I can see them before I put them in this time. I learned my lesson here, at least we didn't uh, lose all the fish, but unfortunately we did lose the majority that were in here. So for now, this is just going to remain empty where it is. Down here on the floor, we've got my Marineland 5 gallon portrait canyon aquascape with my sparkling gouramis. So this tank has been through a couple problems. Uh, it had a bit of a hair algae breakout that is slowly coming under control and also a lot of problems with the sparkling gouramis. They were just fine for a long time, but uh, the other ones just did not end up making it. So we just have these two right now, just this pair, but they're doing great in this setup and I'm not planning on adding any more anytime soon. I think that these are just perfect inhabitants for this tank. Unfortunately, it's very hard to film uh, because of the way that the light works in this tank, but the scape is actually still looking great exactly the way I wanted it to. Unfortunately, I can't really keep that sand path in the middle as clean and white as I want it to look, but you know, that just kind of comes with an aquascape like this, and when you have this many tanks, you can't really keep up a clean white sand path every day when you have all these other ones to maintain. But all in all, this tank is really settled in nicely, and now the green hair algae is starting to become dealt with, it's actually really coming into its own. Again, it's just stocked with spoken grommies, a single nerite snail, and a couple red really shrimp that show themselves every once in a while, but it's a pretty rare uh, occasion when I see them. Usually they hang out behind the, behind the main piece of wood or something like that. But this is a really nice unique scape and I really like how it looks in this tank. A little bit difficult to maintain getting my hands in there and stuff, but it's well worth it because I don't have to do much maintenance on it at all actually. Once every couple weeks, I'll get in there, do a water change, siphon some things out of the sand path, clean things up, and it looks great again. Moving next door, we've got my Fluvalflex 9 gallon tank with my Lampi Rasbora. So this tank is going to be broke down relatively soon, going to be one of the next to be rescaped, mainly just because the plants are not doing so hot, as you can probably see by the stem plants in the background, just because there's not a lot of nutrients in the substrate anymore in this tank, and there really never was, it was mainly relying on root tabs, and since I've stopped fertilizing root tabs so much, it's because it wasn't really super sustainable, I'm going to get this tank broken down, rescaped, probably do a dirty setup in here, nice little wall stab method, and it'll be a really cool setup in here. But right now it's just sort of on autopilot, doing its own thing, fish are really healthy, tank's doing great, but uh, plants aren't looking so hot, so I gotta take care of that soon. It's a very simple setup in here, just literally some sand, some plants, and some fish, and that's basically all. This kit is one that is very popular and is one that I really like, and I would recommend to anybody these Fluval Flex kits. And I think they're a great beginner setup, they have really great lights in them, and a good filtration system. So I definitely recommend it. I'm a pretty big Fluval fan. I do like kit tanks like this. I think this one works perfectly, especially for the price. You get these for like 100 bucks, and all you need to do is basically add plants, substrate, and fish. It gets a water change once every like 4 months. It barely ever gets water changes, and it does just fine. But other than that, this tank's very simple, and again, not much to see. Above these tanks on this rack is my 10 gallon Neon Tetra Aquarium. 
So this tank is kind of just doing its own thing right now. Uh, it's sort of overrun by duckweed. I'm going to take care of that pretty soon, but that sort of happens every week. Just the duckweed takes over and I can't really get it out because the really dense mass of plants in the upper right corner. But this is a really nice little skate that I have enjoyed having while it's been set up. And the neon tetras are just a, such a fun classic fish to have in this tank. As you can see right now, uh, up, up in the top of the tank, there's actually one cherry shrimp in here. No other cherry shrimps, just that one. And it's a very old. It's probably three years old or so. Don't know how old it is. Just some big old female cherry shrimp that I have in here. And it's just been hanging out for a real long time. Don't know how old exactly it is, but it's multiple years old. I don't know how long it's gonna end up living, but it seems to enjoy this tank. Don't really know what it eats. I guess it just pecks on algae or something or leftover fish food because I don't uh, actually directly feed it, but it just sort of does its own thing. It's been in here for a long time and it's kind of a fun little thing to have in here. It's huge though. It's probably an inch long, so much bigger than any of my other shrimp. And it's just kind of a cool little a mono shrimp sized cherry shrimp that I have hanging out. Also have a little bristlenose pleco juvenile in here that uh, just sort of hangs out uh, obviously not going to be a permanent fish in this tank they get much too large they produce too much waste but i need a place to put it and this tank was just fine so it sort of cruises around hangs out and is just living life in here until i end up moving it when it gets too large but this tank's actually very simple just a lot of limnophila and then some anubias and boosts and that's basically all of the plants in this tank it's very simple very simple hardscape and everything just sort of runs itself in this tank another one that i only do maybe one water change on every two weeks or so very low maintenance very simple nestled at the end of this shelf is this nice little 2.6 gallon fluval ebby kit so this was at one point a uh shrimp breeding tank but now it's sort of just become a shrimp and dwarf rasbora jungle setup that is just sort of doing its own thing not trying to breed shrimp the colony isn't really growing at all but i'm just really enjoying the no maintenance jungle look of this setup also basically no hardscape in here there's a couple sticks that i just threw in there but it's mainly encompassed by some guppy grass and moss and just tons of other plant scraps that i threw in here that are just doing the thing growing where they can and just sort of creating this really natural jungle vibe it's got a ton of snails in it and a relatively large group of cherry shrimp along with a nice school of exclamation point rasboras that really only show up during fruit feeding time and you'll just see poking around in the background for the rest of the day all in all this tank's just a fun tiny little thing to have hanging out right here it's a super fun little ecosystem and it's a great little no maintenance setup i pretty much just have to top it off and that's really all i do i'll do water change on it once every month or so but the plants really do everything and all in all this tank is just kind of running itself and everything is super healthy in it and i think this is just a super nice example of what you could do in a nice low maintenance tiny little world also on this shelf, we've got something that some people who are frequent viewers of this channel might not actually expect, and that's this 5-gallon top fin kit that belongs to my grandma. Currently, my grandma and grandpa are away vacationing in Arizona, and my grandma and I wanted to make sure that her fish was safe while she was gone, so the best move was for me to take them in while she was away. And this is a very simple, beginner-friendly setup that my grandma and I have been working on for almost two years now, and I think it's just a really great, simple 5-gallon community tank setup. Very simple plants, mainly Anubias and a couple stem plants in the corner. We've got a couple crypts in here. It's stocked with some cherry barbs, a couple endlers, and a little school of pygmy quarries who we don't see too often. They like to hang out in the back and within the Anubias, but they'll come out every once in a while for the feeding time. There's also a few shrimp in here that we'll see putting around every once in a while, and a couple snails. Very simple little 5-gallon community tank setup that has really just been doing great its entire life, never had problems with it, and this is just a super awesome way to get my grandma into this hobby, and she really appreciates it, she really loves this tank, and a lot of people seem to like it too. Moving on, we've got what is personally my favorite setup in this room, pretty much no questions asked and i would love to hear what your guys favorite setup in this whole video is so once you're done watching let me know in the comments below but this is my recently set up 10 gallon riparium so this tank features a most growth that comes above the rim i just really love the natural look that this tank has with all the leaf litter and the way that the plants are creeping into the water and just sort of blending everything together in a really nice way I also really love the mist maker that is installed in this tank. I think it really wouldn't be the same without it, and I really love the way this setup just looks and grows. 
Everything's doing great in here, the moss especially. The hydrocodile is growing everywhere, and pretty much every plant I've put in here that's growing at most is doing great. So I really have no complaints with this tank. I've never had a problem with it since day one. I've only done a couple water changes on it. It gets one maybe like once a week or so, once every two weeks. It's uh, really not a big hassle to take care of, and it's really just been going smooth and looking great. It houses a school of lamb chop rasboras and a single harlequin rasbora. Uh, the lone harlequin is just because I had one in my uh, old retirement fish tank, and I had nowhere to put him, so I threw him in here with the lamb chops. I figured he looks similar enough that he's not a big distraction, and at least he's with a group of fish that he can sort of pretend are his own kind. I'm sure he can't tell the difference. There's also a group of blue dream and just sort of brownish cherry shrimp in here, which complement the setup really well. I think shrimp are just like the perfect extra little thing to have in here. They're doing great and I've already seen some buried ones. I actually really like the just the brown shrimp. I think they look super natural in this tank. They blend in perfectly. Really helps give that wild vibe to it. I also have a single one of those also juvenile bristle nose plecos in here just because again i had nowhere to put him and i figured he would at least for the time being enjoy rasping on this big piece of wood and he sure has again not a permanent fish to have in here i would not recommend one of those fish for a tank under i don't know like 20 gallons and even that's kind of pushing it when they're full grown but for now as a small fish he's doing just fine in here and he'll stay in here until i have a place to put him but all in all this tank's doing great definitely my favorite in the room although there are a couple close competitors now right here we've got what is my biggest and definitely what is my most unique and sort of different tank in the fish room and that's my 55 gallon cave style aquarium so when i got this tank i really wanted to do something different with it and this is what I came up with. I really think that it's not something that pretty much anyone has ever done, and it's stocked with a bunch of fish that you don't really see very often in this hobby, especially not in the amount that I have. So this 55 gallon is stocked with, I think it's something like 30, 32, 33 Mexican blind cave tetras. And these are really unique fish to this hobby because they're just really not showcased very often in large groups like this. And I was really happy to be able to do that in this tank, really getting to see behavior out of them that a lot of people don't get to observe. This is a fast flowing tank and they really love to, love to swim in the fast moving water, which is kind of interesting because they come from places where they really won't experience fast flow typically, even though they do have this torpedo tetra shape, but they absolutely love and appreciate this fast flowing water. I also relatively recently added a group of 11 albino corridora. You can see a couple of them zipping around in here from time to time. They do like to hide underneath my stalactites that I built for this tank. Everything in this tank I built from the ground up. There is a build video for actually every single one of the tanks in this room. If you're interested, just go on my channel and find it. But every single one of these stalactites and stalagmites I made from individual pieces of rock. So if you're interested in seeing how I built this tank, check out the build video. But the corridors love to hide in and amongst the stalactites and stalagmites, and they love to kind of hide under them because there are little caves in there. They actually, most of them are hollow, so they like to sort of hang out in there so you don't see them all out all at once. But when I feed them, they come around and they're really fun fish to have in this tank. This whole setup is my only tank that I have that has no plants, and it's actually been getting along just fine. I'm getting a little bit of cyanobacteria uh, just in the bottom right corner for some reason, only there. Maybe that's a dead zone of flow. But other than that, this tank's been pretty much a breeze. Uh, it does grow uh, quite a bit of diatoms. I need to f clean the glass pretty much every couple of days. But other than that, water changes once every two weeks or so, and things are very simple in this tank. I think it's just got such a nice look to it that you really can't achieve uh, any other way than doing a tank like this. I don't think plants would be something that would complement this design very much. Maybe I'm considering doing some like boosts, maybe like right around here, but like the purple boost, like the midnight boost or whatever it's called, but probably won't do that um, uh, because boost is very expensive, but uh, boost plant, if you're listening, uh, hit me up, I'm like, happy to showcase some of your plants in this tank, but yeah, uh, I think I don't plan on really adding any other pl any plants to this tank i think it just does well without them i think it has its own unique aesthetic but i really just love this tank from the led backlight in the left corner to the fast flow that creates this nice ripple effect to the fish i love everything about this tank and it's just something so unique to come in and look at every day this tank is lit by a shop light and because half of this is blocked off it gives me a nice little shelf with some light on it that i can grow some plants on so right now i've got a little 
little wabikusa bowl hanging out right here in this little container and I've got some plants growing the most. Got a little tiny terrarium hanging out here, a little wabikusa ball, and a little phone that I'm trying to resurrect that I used to have growing in my little pond style tank, which is no longer running. So I've got a couple plants right here, not very good at growing house plants, but something in a little environment like this, pretty good at doing my best to revive this phone. It's doing its best. And we've got, maybe I'll do something with this. It's a really cool piece of wood that looks like a tooth that's actually hollow. Planning on doing something with that, don't know what I'll do, but it gives me a nice little shelf to grow things on. Also got this little bit of pothos coming in right here, and of course my 1000 subscribe subscriber plaque. Can't believe that uh, we're already at 2000, thank you very much everybody. But we've got that here, got a little tool rack right here, got a couple custom fish mounts that I made, and right here I've got my product lineup, I've got some aquarium glass cleaner right here in a smaller bottle, the main bottle's right here. Got a couple bottles of Prime, need to restock on that. Got a little bit of Easy Green and some H2O Plants Vital Fertilizer. Don't use it too much, I probably need to start getting on that, uh, but my plants don't seem to mind not getting a lot of liquid fertilizer. Moving over, we've got my fish breeding rack, and up on the top I've got a couple nano aquariums. This one right here is my Mexican Dwarf Crayfish Scape. You can see him right here. So Mexican Dwarf Crayfish are actually really awesome. They're a species that I had never kept before this one. And honestly, I'm so glad that I got this guy just because it's already been so fun having this one around. And honestly, I wish I had done this sooner. Personally, I think that they're just so much cooler than shrimp and you can actually cohab them with shrimp. In fact, I've got quite a few in here and they're breeding up a storm. So this is uh, sort of indirectly become a Mexican dwarf crayfish slash shrimp breeding tank. I'm sure that he picks off a couple of the shrimplets every once in a while, and, but the shrimp are kind of too fast for him to bother catching. He'll sort of mess around with them a little bit, but he'll get tired of it after a while and he, he doesn't really do any harm to the shrimp and the shrimp don't really care about him. The tank itself is an Aquion 3 gallon cube aquarium with a cheap little hang on back filter and a DIY light. I escaped this tank so that it would have a lot of crevices and hiding places uh, and places for my little crayfish to explore and he definitely takes full advantage of it. The tank has really grown in nicely and everything's going super well in this tank. I'm letting algae grow on the right side panel just so the shrimplets have something to graze on. But other than that, I haven't really had any algae problems at all. I hardly do any maintenance on this tank just because it's got such a light bio load. I'll do one water change every couple weeks, but really that's all I do and everything's actually going really great for this tank. Crayfish are actually surprisingly personable and whenever I tap on the front glass or just sort of even walk by the tank, I'll see him charge up to the front and just sort of wave his claws around expecting some food. It's actually just been really easy to care for this guy and super rewarding and super fun. I definitely recommend one if you can get your hands on one. So right here is another tank that is going to get a rescape very soon. It's probably next on the agenda actually to get this one done. I've just sort of been putting it off because I just want to make sure I get this video out uh, and without having to spoil anything for you guys for the next build. So this currently is a tank that I'm just letting run wild and grow like crazy because it's housing my emerald dwarf reservoirs and they're very skittish fish and they really enjoy as much cover as possible so I'm just letting this Rotala grow as much as possible. As you can see I've got some food in there for them to peck on just so that they even come out and show themselves because I'll see them uh, pecking around the tank every once in a while but as soon as I get close they zip right back into that Rotala bush where they feel comfortable. So they're kind of just hanging out in there. There's actually I think like almost 10 or 11 in here but you can never tell just by looking at it and sometimes I forget there's even fish in here just because of how good they hide. But they're definitely really reclusive fish and the next setup I want to do in this tank for them will definitely work around that. But right now they're just sort of hanging out in this tank just letting it go. Barely ever do water changes on it mainly just top it up just let this go taller grow as much as possible and everything's stable in here just waiting until it's time for their next setup. There is some algae growing in here but again I don't really mind because I'm just gonna discard all the materials in here and start fresh with the next setup. As much as I don't like to just get rid of old materials, when it comes to a tank that's already got an algae infestation, it's gonna be much better if I just get rid of it and start fresh so that I don't risk transferring it to other systems. Lastly right here is a tank that is sort of just hanging out right now. It's a little no filter cube that I haven't done anything to in a very long time. It does house a small group of exclamation point rasboas, the same that are in my little nano shrimp tank and I plan on removing them and adding them in with the bigger school in that tank. I may need to break down this tank in order to catch them but we'll see. This tank is sort of just sitting here not really doing anything to it and likely it will get rescaped as well. 
this whole shelf right now the top part besides the crayfish tank is sort of just getting ready for new projects and it's pretty exciting right here is my most recent big project my 10 gallon breeding rack so this custom built rack right here not only holds those nano tanks you already saw but five 10 gallon aquariums that i'm working on getting set up to breed fish currently i only have one quote unquote breeding tank already underway right now the other ones are sort of just holding things right at the moment and the bottom two will probably stay that way the top three i plan on doing breeding setups with those so let's take a look things are not fully developed yet in this whole system because it is relatively new but what my plan is is to have a pistogramma here german rams here and then keep my shell dwellers here so let's go into a little more depth of the shell dweller tank and i'll tell you what's going on in these tanks at the moment so right here's my new lamprologus multifasciatus aquarium these are lake tangique and shell dwellers and currently they're in their own 10 gallon aquarium which they have actually spawned in once already and i'm hoping to get another spawn out of them eventually the tank itself is a relatively basic setup with nothing but some sand some shells a custom rock wall that i made and some algae all these tanks here are run off of air this one's run off a corner sponge filter and there's no equipment in the tank except for a heater and that's all these fish are actually doing really well in here and as you guys may be able to see i've already got a spawn out of them i have two little juveniles poking around in here those are the only ones that actually made it from the last spawn this tank's had no problems at all gets a water change every other week and the fish are extremely happy and healthy and again the juveniles are growing out really nicely and i'm expecting that there'll be a sexual maturity relatively soon I do hope to be able to get a couple more so that I can sort of mix up the gene pool and stuff like that. But I'm not exactly keeping these guys just to breed them, but it is super fun to see them spawn. And eventually I hope to be able to have enough that I can give them out to some local hobbyists in my area because they're not super common here. Pretty hard to find and I definitely feel like these guys are something that needs to be kept more widely in my area because they're just so fun and actually really easy to care for now these next two tanks are not actually fully set up to what they will be eventually right now they're just full of guppy grass i'm just letting it grow and they both have some sort of just temporary fish in them this one right here is where i put all my retirement fish that used to be in an old 15 gallon that i had on the floor in they're all just hanging out in here sort of just chilling in there until i can find a home for them and keeping this tank cycled so that when i eventually get the german rams that i plan on keeping in this tank the tank's already set up and cycled for them this guppy grass has gotten out of control in that tank i do need to take care of that but it's not really a big deal in the tank to the left it's going to eventually be set up for some epistogramma but right now my black leopard guppy colony is residing in there and they're actually really enjoying it and i do plan on keeping them in one of these tanks now so maybe i'll reconsider whether or not i actually do want to do a epistogramma in this tank maybe i'll just leave it for my black leopard guppies i do want to have epistos at one point in one of these setups but for now i'm actually really enjoying these guppies in this tank they're just hanging out in here again they used to be in that mini pond and they're just living in here temporarily until i can decide whether or not i want to keep them in this tank or if i want to shuffle them around all these tanks are very simple they'll all run off one central air system which is underneath my bed right here and all of them are run off these little sponge filters you might be able to see in the back right there these three have heaters these two do not we'll get to these in a second they're all lit by these, I think they're called Aquanite. Yeah, Aquanite LEDs. Just kind of the cheapest <laughs> LEDs you can get on Amazon. And they actually work really nicely. They're not too bright, uh, but they will still grow some very easy plants and stuff like that. So I'm pretty happy with that. Got some pothos growing right here. Got these nice roots coming in the back, helping to keep our water quality pristine right here. All of them have glass lids right here right here i need to get this one a different lid because this is an old crusty lid and these ones are all matching but other than that they're all very simple setups down here at the bottom we've got my plant grow out tank and my quarantine system so on the right you can see my quarantine tank i've got my giant adoption blind cave tetra he's just hanging out in there uh he's quarantined for long enough now that i'll probably end up moving him into the main tank soon he's just sort of hanging out in there until the next batch of new fish comes in to be quarantined I'm very happy I have a quarantine system now, it just makes things a lot easier on me and kind of gives me the peace of mind that everything is going to be safe going into new systems. I'm also storing some Suswasatong in there, at least I was before this guy started eating all of it. I basically had twice as much, but he's pretty much eating it all, even though he can't see it. He does have a way of finding it, so that's too bad. Also sinking some driftwood in there, which is actually nice to have a spare tank like this laying around so that I can waterlog driftwood for a new scape. 
Over here, I've got my plant storage tank. It's very simple, just a layer of fluval stratum and just a bunch of random fish keeping the tank cycled. Pretty much this tank's just holding plant trimmings and any new plants that I get that need a place to go that isn't in an established tank. It's honestly something that I think that if you have the means and you have planted tanks, you should really have both of these tanks right here. You should have a quarantine tank and a plant grower tank. I think they're both great. They shouldn't really be the same tank because you're going to be medicating the quarantine tank uh, from time to time. So don't make your plant storage tank your uh, quarantine tank. It's just not a great idea in case you need to medicate. But I think that if you have the means uh, and the space, these two tanks are pretty important for anyone with a fish room, especially someone with as many tanks as I do. I'm kind of surprised it took me this long to have this kind of thing, but I'm really glad I have it. Currently, I've got some the male and female Kohaku guppies I have left in here, along with just a couple random mutt guppies that are just sort of in there just to diffuse aggression between the male and the female. I also have my daisies rice fish in here. They're just hanging out. Don't really know what I'll end up doing with them, but they're just sort of living life in here with the guppies. Coming full circle now, back at the door of the fish room, we've got my 20 gallon long hill stream aquarium. So this aquarium is pretty unique because you can see it from every single side, 360 degree view, and also it's got a very deep sand bed. The thing about that deep sand bed is that I barely ever have to do water changes on this tank and things stay pristine in here water quality wise. I've done maybe one or two since I've set it up and things stay super healthy in here. The tank is run by a large marine land penguin filter, uh, turning over the tank at a very fast rate, creating a very fast flowing river style theme. And I believe that the white cloud mountain minnows in here and the hill stream loaches really enjoy it. This tank is planted relatively sparsely with most of the planting focused around the rocks with some large valsin area and cryptic coins placed behind the largest rock in the back. I really want to sort of mimic a natural hill stream biotype in this tank. Of course, I'm not really trying to go for anything specific. This isn't modeled after any uh, specific region of the earth or specific stream. One day I might want to try a tank like that, but you know, this wasn't the right setup for that. This is just kind of your classic take on a hill stream of biotype. Currently this tank holds a pack of 6 white clouds and 3 hillstream loaches. I think that this sort of just the standard classic hillstream stalking and I can't really argue with it. They work great, they look super good and it's exactly what I'd want in this tank. I'm definitely considering adding some other fish to this tank, uh, maybe some uh, other type of grazing fish or biofilm grazer, but I don't really know for sure yet, maybe even a bamboo shrimp, something like that. I'm not sure, but right now I'm enjoying the stocking as it is. Alright everybody, that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching, and if you stuck around till the end of the video, thank you very much. I know this is a long one today, but you know, it takes a lot of time to cover all these tanks. So, again, let me know what your favorite tank is in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you very much for 2,000 subscribers. I am super honored that everybody has stuck with me up to this milestone, and I hope that we keep growing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.